Now, there's been a lot of coverage in the press recently about our treatment of migrants and particularly uh, deportations and uh, the holding of people who seem to be falling foul of the law. We discussed marriages of convenience earlier in the week and how some of those people are treated when it's uh, suspected that they might have conducted a marriage of convenience. Well, my next guest is a human rights lawyer. He deals uh, very extensively with cases of migration and deportation. He is Michalis Paraskevas. Michalis, thanks for joining me. Good evening to you. Good evening. Thank you very much for having me. First, tell me how you got into the field of um, being a human rights lawyer. Was it something that you thought you might go into when you were studying to qualify? No, actually, I'm not a human rights lawyer. I'm, I'm just a lawyer. That uh, in uh, some time, when I came up for the first time with these kind of cases, I just handled it like the other cases. But uh, I was shocked by what I had to confront. Okay, the, uh, I, had a, I can tell you 1,000 <laughs> cases that I was handling. Uh, for, for example, a very, very uh, unbelievable example is when on, on the 18th of January 2011, the Supreme Court ordered the release uh, of an asylum seeker from uh, a Tamil from Sri Lanka that if he was going to send back he was threatened to death by her, uh, his compatriots. And uh, the, the Supreme Court ordered the release, and the immigration, our beloved immigration department, refused to comply with the decision of the Supreme Court. Can, can they not be held in after, contempt? Let, let me tell you, two days after, another Supreme Court order, 20th of January 2011, and no, not only they didn't uh, release uh, this poor man, Okay, but the next day, 21st of January 2011, they deport him, an they, asylum seeker. They sent him back to Sri Lanka? Not to Sri Lanka, to Pakistan, because it was a, a different case, to, to Pakistan. The one uh, that 18th of January 2011 was never released, I had to fight, I had to gather uh, even, uh, because I consider, first of all, my, I, I consider myself a human being, first of all, and an activist, okay? I want the, the law to comply, especially when you have to deal with humans, you, with human beings, okay? And we, we, I, we had a Supreme Court a judge judgment, and uh, the, the immigration, the police refused to comply with this. Unbelievable. Are they not obliged to comply with a Supreme Court ruling? If you or I break a Supreme Court ruling, we're in big trouble. When you are in a... In the, the, the courts in, in, in democracy, uh, anyway, in a democracy, this kind of type that we have in our world today, when you have a court order, of course, the, the court order must be executed. I, I, if, you don't, if you don't have this, so you don't have a rule of law, so you have a dictatorship, you have a junta, you, do, you have something different, not democracy. Yes, but uh, sorry, what recourse does the Supreme Court have if somebody does not obey one of their rulings? Uh, when I mean, if I disobey a Supreme Court ruling, yeah, you, it, they'll put it, me in prison, it, it, yes? This is a crime. This is a crime. And will I go to prison? Uh, yes, but the Supreme Court must order uh, this. When, when this came up and I was shocked, I was stuck yelling at the, the court, and in this time, in, in this particular case, in the 18th of January 2011, by accident, Mr. Ionas Nicolaou, today's uh, Ministry of Justice, back then he was the president of the legal committee of the parliament, I saw Mr. Ionas Nicolaou, and I, I called him, I said, Mr. Nicolaou, listen, five minutes uh, earlier, uh, Mr. Kramvis, the Supreme Court uh, judge, Order the release of this poor man, and, and the policeman don't uh, comply with this decision. He saw the, the judgment, he asked something to the, why don't you release him? And the, the policeman said, oh, this is our order. And uh, Mr. Jonas Nicolaou said, okay, and he left. And I didn't know whatever, what, what else to do, so I went to the, the judge Kramvis chambers, I knock the door, I, I, I tell him, Your Honor, I'm very sorry to come to your chamber, but you, you, had, you delivered your decision a few minutes before to release this, my, my client, and the, the police, uh, they, they, don't, uh, they refuse to comply with your judgment. And Mr. Kravis 
tell me, but okay, I, I did my job. I, I delivered my judgment. This is, I'm, I'm just describing you the facts, okay? So everyone can make his or her conclusion. This took place many times, and I'm telling you that things are getting worse. In what way? In what way? You have many directives. Okay, l- let's, let's take the directive 115 of 2008. It's about the return of the irregular immigrants. In this directive, it specifically says that you cannot put in custody an immigrant just because you consider him illegal, irregular, because illegal it's, it's not the proper, you, you have to call him irregular immigrant. So if, when you have the decision from the general director of the ministry and the director of the immigration, when you, when you have the decision that someone is irregular, you have to give him the chance, according to the directive, you have some scale, you have uh, some steps that you have to follow. First of all, you have to give him the right. So this is, this is an obligation of Cyprus and all the member states. You have the obligation to give him, uh, to deliver to him the decision so that he, he can go and uh, object to this uh, decision. You have to give him the, ra- uh, the right uh, for 30 days to uh, uh, deport himself, okay? You have to give him this right, 30 days. If, if, you, con- if you consider him dangerous for public safety or for whatever, okay, this is an uh, legal terms that they have content. It's not uh, somewhere in the, in the universe. Okay? You cannot just say, I consider you danger for the public safety. No. Okay, you cannot do. Even if they, because they do this. But let's say that uh, you, you think that this woman, uh, he will escape from Cyprus and avoid the deportation. Okay, you can, you can, uh, you have the right, according to the directive, to have some pressure on him or her. Let's say, like the criminal cases, you can, you can force him to pay, let's say, 1,000 euros as a guarantee. You can tell him or her to deliver his travel or her travel documents. You, you can force him to come every day or one or two times a week to the police station and report himself. And that's it. And the most important thing is that you have to give him the right to object this decision to the court, not just to an administrative. So so he can lodge an appeal against a decision. It does seem strange, Michalis, that we're talking generally speaking here, correct me if I'm wrong, about people who probably haven't got anywhere like a thousand euros. So what on earth is the point of saying that as long as they pay their own way back to wherever they came, they can't afford to buy the ticket, can they? Listen, okay, there are these, these you, you, we cannot generalize. It, it depends. Each person is different. Uh, I, I have many cases that this, I have many clients of mine that they are regular people like you and me mm-hmm. that they just want to live their life with this dignity. Okay, and they have and they, they work so they earn money. They, they and you have to understand that. Well, let's say the Cypriots uh, when they go to England, they they have groups. They help each other. The same thing happened in Cyprus. You have a group let, of different uh, nationalities. They help each other. For mm-hmm. example, Tamils, they help each other. So everybody can put 10 euros, for example, and gather an amount of 1,000 and uh, put it as a guarantee. I'm, I'm, uh, I know because this is happening all the time. But uh, I wanted to, to add something very important. According to the European Directive 115 of 2008, you, you have to take under consideration, under the, first of all and above all, the, the interest of the child or the children. The, the custody in order to, for, for uh, an, an irregular immigrant to be in custody, there are three very important decisions from the ECJ, from the European Court of Justice, very recent cases. That says that you have to use this scale. This is an obligation of all the member states, and you can put him in custody or her in custody just when everything, everything, the objection to the court to, has finished. There is no other, uh, he has, or her, he, she or he doesn't have any other right to stay in Cyprus, let's say. And you, you, you have the right to deport him, and you can put him in custody just for a few days so that to prepare the deportation. What is happening in Cyprus is that they just say, ah, you are irregular, 
and then let's say that the police find you in the street. This is this is what actually happened. There are, there is no even a decision from the general director and the director of the immigration department. There is no there, there is no such thing. And uh, let's say that a police, an ordinary police, find an immigrant and ask for his uh, for his or her documents. Uh, let's say that uh, the immigration side is illegal. The same day he he is, he, he he will be put in custody, and the same day he will be delivered the the decision. But in any case, you, the the one hundred percent of the cases is that they just put them in prison. That's it. Uh, there is a regulation, I think, about how long you can yes, detain somebody. According to the European Directive, the maximum that you can detain someone is six months. And there are two exceptions, but the maximum is six months. You cannot uh, detain someone for, for more than six months. You, you can detain someone for more than six months when this person does not, he doesn't uh, com- cooperate with the immigration for his or her deportation, and when the immigration department expects some documents from abroad. This is the only two exceptions. But what we ha- I have a client, I have a client that he is more than 19 months. The European directive set a ceiling, maximum, so the, the maximum, but the final maximum, 18 months. I have a poor client, and I can tell you, Ah, and the most important thing, this is what I'm going to tell you, is that this is the most important. According to Article 19 of the immigration law, it's not a crime for someone to don't have, you cannot put in prison someone just because his visa, his visa is expired. There is a specific article in the immigration law, and the, these people, the immigration, they took people in, in courts, in district courts, and unfortunately, I'm, I'm very sad to tell you that the district courts, I don't know if they don't know the law, they put these people in prison, despite that there is no uh, right to do this. You cannot put in prison, it, it, it's, it's not a crime that you can put someone in prison just because he is illegal uh, in Cyprus. But what the, the courts do, they put them in prison. And I challenge this uh, three times to the Supreme Court, and unfortunately, I'm very sad to tell you that the Supreme Court, I, te- I, 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 I told to the judges, Your Honor, they didn't have the, the, the court, the district court, in two cases, the district court in Lima, or the t- district court in Nicosia. I don't know if they, they didn't, I don't, I don't know why they did this, but according to the law, to the immigration law, you cannot put in prison just because his visa or her visa expired. Okay, but despite that, they, they put them in prison. And uh, I challenge that. I, I, uh, and because of this in prison, this is what the, the Orient Express, I don't know. Uh, this is what the, it's unbelievable what is happening. And because, and listen, Mrs. Chagalli, when someone is put in prison, the Mrs. Chagalli is the director of the immigration, she decided that just because you are put, was in prison, let's say, for 10 days or 15 days, you are for somehow the greatest danger for the nation, okay? And Mrs. Shagali, with the general director of the, of the ministry, used to be Mr. Ashodi, now he moved to the Labour ministry, they, they ordered, just because you were put in prison for an illegal reason, so they used what they did illegally, and they say that you have to deport because you put, was put in prison. I don't, I don't know if you understand. What, yes, I what think I do. But the, the worrying thing, you mentioned children who are caught up yeah. in all of this, yeah. Michalis, and there have been some very worrying cases recently of children who've been separated from their parents because the parents have been deported. What happens to the children in these cases? Because that is against what little I do know of all European family law. I have, uh, I ha- I have one case that the mother, a European citizen was arrested illegally in front of her child. The Commission of the Protection of Child uh, issued a very, very cada belt against the immigration. 6th of August, this poor girl, 23 years old, the mother of a child under 3 years old, he was ar- she was arrested in the immigration department, and the father came to take the child. They, they put her in prison just saying that it's a marriage of convenience. The poor father, a Pakistan uh, national, he didn't have any other choice 
that rather than to have uh, a DNA test, even if he didn't have the obligation to, because the best certificate of Cyprus Republic considered him to be the father. So it's unbelievable that there is a legal document saying that this man is the father. So you have to object to your own decision because Cyprus Republic is, is one. It's not the Department of the Immigration and something different than another department. You understand what I'm uh, mm. what I'm so, and this poor boy was forced to pay for a DNA test. He succeeded to the DNA test. The DNA test committed, uh, that from the Genetic Institute in Cyprus proves that he is the father. And the, not only they didn't release the mother, but on the Saturday of 2 of November, he was arrested too. And I went to the immigration department 11 o'clock in the night. You have five policemen there uh, arrest the big terrorists and uh, the, the officer t- they are telling me hey Michalis, uh, where is the child uh, we have to and I, I told him in his face listen I don't trust you I don't I you are telling lies I, I don't believe you that you care about this child you or your supervisors I don't know who are they okay so don't tell me that you care about the child you are you arrested the mother you arrested the father you dare to tell me that you care about the, the child Okay, mm. and the child now, by luck, only by luck, is with his uncle, because the, the brother of these... Well, he's lucky he's got an yes, uncle here. Yes, yes, well, yes. It's, it's very worrying, Michalis, that this very, seems very to worrying. be routinely going on uh, day after day, time after time. We will hopefully next week be talking to the Commissioner for Children's Rights on our programme, because it is International Children's Rights Day next Wednesday. So I'll be talking, I hope, to Lida Kursumba. We'll bring some of these things up then. It has been a pleasure talking to you, Thank and you the very, very best much. of luck with your continued work. Thank you very much.